Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another preview. Now it feels like ages since we sat here and we actually had a chat about anything. Of course, the channel has been absolutely booming recently. Um, big shout out to everybody that is new to the channel. Anybody that's been here from the start, anybody that's joined halfway through. The public videos, right? Like the actual response of the game from the public videos is actually unbelievable. Like when I put up the 5 inches one, <laughs> I thought to myself, I don't know whether it'll do, what people like, what people are not, because I know that the majority of people on the channel are football related fans, but even the football related fans genuinely like the public video, and I was like, this is what I wanted, do you know what I'm saying? So, this channel will be built around public videos, football videos, when there is nothing to do football wise, a public video will be out. Now, in the next six days, I have about six football videos, of course, people that are on this channel from the start or whatever, or joined after through or whatever. Well, no, that basically my schedule around the football is pretty hectic. Of course, the day before I release a preview, the day of the actual football game, I release a match day vlog, the day after release um, a match review. Now, of course, Butter play Tuesday night, which means that, of course, this weekend, then three videos have to come into play. Monday will be the preview of the Crew Alexandra game inside the Cup. Tuesday, the match day vlog. Wednesday, the match review. Thursday, possibly either have a day off filming because I'd be absolutely shattered from filming all the time, or go out and do another public video. If I don't do public video at all this weekend or next week, people, listen, the following week I'll be out in Reka or even Butter on the 23rd with Chris Sayer, who's an up and coming grime artist. If you don't know him, um, go check him out on YouTube, Chris Sayer, um, fantastic grime artist as well. Um, basically, that's who I'm going to go to Butter with on. Friday the 23rd, so if you want to be in Bury, you want to come on the um, video, meet me there at dinner time on the 23rd of this month. But we're here for one reason. Well, that took a long time to get over there. Two minutes just to tell you all the sort of new stuff coming to the channel, but Jimmy's it's best to keep you updated. We are here though for one reason the match preview Butter versus Brentford. Um, and it's one of them games it, where, you know I mean, when you look at it, I put it with Brentford. Brentford always gives us a good, I mean, they always give us a good game. Um, always. I don't think there's been a game when Borough played Brentford when, when it's been easy. I think the last time it got easy is when Borough beat them 4-0. And that was a few fair years ago. So, listen, at their place, it was a tough game. But up here as well, I mean, listen, last year, the deal was 2-1 up here. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Borough were going through a bad spell, losing six in a row. Brentford came down. Borough were 1-0 up. Uh, I think we had half an hour to go. And, of course, Brentford brought it back and beat us 2-1. Um, but, like I say, do you know what I mean? They're a scary team to play, in my opinion. And um, they're very much like quick on the ball. Do you know what I mean? Quick out the feet. Uh, when they come attacking at you, trust me, they are a scary, scary team. They do pose a threat. Um, so I do think it's going to be a tough game. But as always, I've got my notebook with loads of stuff written down on it. So let's get into it. The manager, Thomas Frank. I don't know loads about him, but he's the Brentford manager. Of course, stadium's Griffin Park. And he's actually moved to a brand new um, 17,000 seated stadium. Very, very soon. It's getting built less than a mile away from Griffin Park. If you haven't been to Griffin Park before, make sure to go this season with the butter. Um, there's a pub on every single corner of the stadium. And last season, I actually did every single pub on the corner of the stadium. And it only, I think it cost me below 20 quid for four pints, which I thought was pretty decent in London. Let's be real. Do you know what I mean? It's London. London prices. And I think the most I got charged was like £3.80. And that was only in one of the pubs. Everywhere else was like £2.80, £3.00. So, not too bad, but like I say... Do you know what I mean? He's never been to Griffin Park before. Go to Griffin Park. And also, a fun fact, in one of the corners of the stadium, well, in one of the pubs on the corner, Green Street was actually filmed in one of them pubs. So, there you go. Get yourself down there this season. Go and see a little bit of history about Green Street. That's if you know about Green Street. If you don't know about Green Street, where about you been hiding? Go and watch the film. And like I say, man, make sure to go to Griffin Park before, before they build a new one. Because then at least then, later on in life, you know what I mean? You can say, oh, you know what I mean? Obviously, Griffin Park, I went to it. And now we get to go to the new one. So, do you know what I mean? It's out there, and it's out there. So, of course, the first game of the season, Brentford took on Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham have signed a fair few players, and Brentford have done that as well. But I looked at it and I thought, yeah, you know, Brentford should get the win. I actually backed them on my accumulator. The thanks very much to the Bees, who got beat 1 0. Um, I didn't expect it to happen. Um, to be honest with you, I thought Brentford at home, very, very quick side. Do um, you know what I mean? Very much attacking, scary team, as I've already said. Um, and overall, it's pose a massive, massive threat to any team that goes to Griffin Park. Now, I did talk to Brummy Joe, of course, he's a Birmingham City vlogger, and he said that, do you know what it was? He, well, he was expecting to get the win, but he said how tough of a game it actually was for Birmingham. Um, fair play, do you know what I mean? <laughs> At least he was honest. Um, do you know what I mean? So, even though they're hurting at the minute, do you know what I mean? Of course, they're going to be angry doing it, beat 1-0 at home, first game of the season. They're going to want to try and get that win soon. 
So they're going to come here tomorrow and they're going to get that little bit extra. You know what I mean? To try and get the three points. Try and get all the confidence going. That's the kind of way they're going to go. For the butter, of course, we drew three all at Luton. British on Belonga scores a penalty. Butter win 4-2. But listen, it wasn't to be. And head up to British on Belonga. Do you know what I mean? The next penalty he gets, I'm sure he will put away. And um, hopefully I haven't just jinxed that, by the way, by saying that. But yeah, butter drew three all. Lewis Wing's goal obviously stood out to every single butter fan inside the world. As soon as you put it in the top corner, I'm not joking. I got sent to Cloud9, and I can tell you Cloud9 is a spot on place to visit, let me tell you that. Um, and like I say, I mean, that game overall was a madness. And plus as well, the Matchday vlog that one did really, really well, so big up yourselves for all watching it. Um, of course, at the minute, Brentford doesn't really mean anything about the league position, only one game in, but they are 21st, Borough are 12th. Well, a lot of people have sort of projected Borough to finish 10th towards 12th place, and a lot of people are working that Brentford will finish inside the top six, and a lot of people have Brentford as well, Finish obviously above Butter, which I thought was quite interesting to be fair. Um, of course, the transfers Brentford side now they sold a fair few decent players inside their team, and it kind of got me thinking to myself, why on earth they've done this? Is it to free up some money? Do you know what I mean wages wise, and also also get you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Also getting a bit of money coming their way, but more pay the top striker. Yeah, they sold him, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I know you got Ben Rama, I know you got Ollie Watkins. But Morpé was like their top player, wasn't he? And last season, didn't he score like over 20 goals for Brentford? And if the guy's on a high wage, and if Brentford can't really afford to play it out all the time, fair play, I understand that. But if they can afford it, why send him? I mean, I couldn't understand that. I couldn't understand the transfer. Morpé has gone to Brighton for £18 million. Of course, on his side, well, Johnny you know I mean? got a thing. I mean, Premier League team comes in for him. He's playing Championship, £18 million. Money talks. Do you know what I mean? So... I, I personally don't know what's going on that side, but we're not supporting Brentford. I didn't really read it right into it, but I just seen the transfer, 18 million. Big loss, if you ask me, to Brentford, of course. Now the transfer window shut as well. Um, and, of course, Ollie Watkins is there. Listen, he's spot on player. Do you know got to watch him tomorrow? Conza went for 11.97 million to Aston Villa, another, another top player. And they actually showed the goalkeeper. Now, Bentley, and um, Brentford fans out there might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when we played last year, I'm pretty sure he was your number one goalkeeper. And that's when it's on to Bristol City, who I believe is a rival. Do you know, Bristol City is still in this league. Bentley's gone there. Of course, I'm well, I'm reckoning that he's going to be their number one goalkeeper. And, like I said, do you know I mean? They sold him for just under £2 million. And again, it's a mad one. Do you know what I mean? Bentley, I thought, was their number one goalkeeper. This I might be completely wrong, but last season when he played, is, I'm pretty sure he played all seasons as number one goalkeeper. So, yeah, kind of threw me off a little bit. Do you know, I couldn't really work that one out. And Josh McEachern is now without a club. And now I know he's ex butter and I was kind of shocked by that, do you know what I mean? I didn't think he did too badly at Brentford for us, he was there, but he was alright. But to read up on the fact that he's got no club now, yeah, that kind of threw me off a little bit again. I'm thinking to myself, Joshua Keckman, 26-year-old, he's a decent player, do you know what I mean? Chelsea prospect. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was a little bit odd again, but fair play, do you know what I mean? I mean Borough could have picked him up, do you know what I mean? He's quite an attacking player, but of course, Borough didn't fancy him, and no one else really fancied him. But of course, at any time inside his career, do you know what I mean? If a club comes in from him, of he can go there, do you know what I mean? He's without a club right now. Best luck to Joshua Kettering for the future. Of course, the butter went out there, and of course, we signed some dead. You know what I mean? This is where we signed some players. We've got, we've got a right back, we've got a left back, we've got a centre attacking midfielder, we've got another goalkeeper who's obviously been here before, being Thomas Mayer, signing from the um, Cyprus, uh, Cyprus Leagues. We've got uh, Jack Spiel, I can't pronounce his name, and it's going to take me a while to pronounce his name, from Charlton for under 2 million. We signed uh, Marcus Brown from West Ham for 198k. Baller came from Blackpool. Um, so, do you know what I mean? Listen, and they're all young lads as well. The Jack Spiel, the Jack Spiel, or Dyke Spiel or something, and Baller are both the same age, and I think Brown's a year older than being 22, so young lads into the football club. You know, we plenty of years in them as well. Let's see exactly how they get on. And Charlton fans um, were saying, do you know what I mean, that they've obviously lost a big player in them. Um, here he comes again, Jack Steel. So, yeah, I mean, brilliant for Butter. I mean, listen, my starting 11 for tomorrow. Being that John Hulke wants to play 4 3 3, which is music to my ears because, it, listen, it's attacking football. Last season, we didn't see very much of it under Tony Pulis. I ain't going to go sign the guy off. I'm just saying that last season, it felt very boring at times. I mean, there wasn't a lot of like attacking football going on. Totally different this season. Woodgate we'll wants to bring in the attacking football. So, my starting level would go like this Dan Randolph for going goal. And the back four <laughs> Jack Steele. Ayala, Shotton, Hayden Colson, because I don't think George Friend's back yet. And if he is back, well, then for me, still, Hayden Colson goes in, no problem. The three inside this 4 3 three would be Lewis Wing, Johnny Housen, Marcus Brown, and Johnny Housen as well. Put him, back in that, put him back into that sort of attacking midfielder role, see how he goes. Do you know what I mean? He'll forward once against Luton and set up Lewis Wing's goal. The guy, right, I love his attitude for one. Johnny Housen's attitude is spot on. Put him anywhere, put him any, put him anywhere inside the starting eleven. 
he will play there for you. Of course, you know I mean, last season he played right wing back, you know what I mean, and of course right back, but he's just got on with it. For me, listen, but you're doing things, you're wasting away a player that's got creative talent there. He ain't a right back, he isn't a right wing back, he's a centre attack midfielder. Do you know what I mean? He's playing that the creative midfielder role. Put him alongside Johnny Alves and Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown came on against uh, Luton. Skinning people. People can get near him. Put him inside the midfield tomorrow with Johnny Alston. Of course, he can also trap back as well. He does have that side, he does have that defensive side to his game. And Lewis Wing. Lewis Wing spot on creative midfield. If you've got three creative players inside that inside that midfield, you will tear teams apart inside the midfield. You mean they won't be able to live with you. Of course, the three ahead of them. If, well, at the minute, sort of Fletcher's playing sort of out, playing, uh, out on the wing. So play him out on the wing. Johnson on the other side. Brett Sombrong up front. And my score prediction for this game, uh, I think it'll be a tough game, I do. Um, and I think Brentford probably will sneak a goal. But I'm going to go for a 3-1 butter, do you know what I mean? Home support, home crowd. Let's everybody get there tomorrow, do you know what I mean? Let's try and make it a sellout if we can. Um, and you know what I mean? Over, let's, give, listen, let's give it on the lads. Jonathan Woodgate's first league home game at the Riverside Stadium. I bet he's going to be feeling all sorts of emotions tomorrow. Um, but yeah, listen, I can't wait for it, do you know I mean? I'm absolutely buzzing for it. Back to Riverside Stadium tomorrow. First league game of the season. Back at the butter. And yeah, I can't wait, man. If you're going to the game, comment down below. Comment down below also to your uh, score predictions. Uh, what is your squad that you'll play tomorrow? Check all my social medias. Link inside the description. I can't stress that enough. Because listen, I do post the most on Instagram. If you want to know about recent videos coming out and all that, go and follow me on Instagram. Link inside the description. If you want my Snapchat, comment down below and I'll give you my Snapchat. Um, Listen, man, listen, man, there's a fair few years on my Snapchat now. And of course, same again. I just post regular videos on there. So, same man, as always, like, comment, share, subscribe. See you soon. Up the border.